Right, Dad's buddy and uh, also bombardier owner is giving Dad a hand here. It is uh, Saturday, September, or I mean uh, February 11th or 12th, I think, or 13th. It's a Saturday, anyways. Uh, we uh, we still don't actually have the yellow out of the shop. It's in behind, but. This is only going to be temporarily in here. Dad wants to actually put uh, front and back tires on so that uh, he can uh, uh, pull it off the trailer. And uh, we hauled in some parts earlier from the bombardier shed that... Uh, and uh, so Dad can put everything together here. Uh, the this narrow gauge bombardier actually still has to uh, uh, come right back out of the, the shop on the trailer. We're going to send it to the machine shop to install the uh, custom fuel tank, and uh, we're also going to uh, get the front panel plasma cut out. Uh, I love my dad, but I'm not going to let his pride get in the way of common sense. We might as well uh, do the plasma cut at the machine shop as well as get to fit that fuel tank in while he's building it. So the guys are just gonna do some uh, blocking here and they're gonna unload and then we're gonna, uh, truck's gonna drive out of the way and then we're gonna uh, let this thaw out a little bit. But the next step here is should be putting the wheels on or at least four of them. Yep, he'll be happy. Yeah? Well, he's. I sent him the picture yesterday of the one machine being done. But, uh, so, as you can see here, guys, this is a beautiful, beautiful paint job. Uh, the customer had found this machine in Minnesota. And he had it completely disassembled. And then, uh, but, uh, He had it completely disassembled, but he was having uh, trouble finding somebody to put it back together. But in the meantime, he got a beautiful paint job on this. And uh, the difference between this bombardier and other bombardiers Dad has worked on is uh, Dad's not spending 50 hours disassembling somebody else's bad repair job. And uh, so he's going to be able to start afresh here. We hauled in some of the parts already. And these are some of the parts that dad's going to immediately need. And there's a box here. There's four tires here. These are the brand new tires you can get from Alpine Guide. So uh, if you go to Alpine Guide, Lee might have some spares. I don't know about rims though. And uh, so you know for the most part most of the, the parts are new the, the customer brought everything but we're going to uh, go through everything make sure it's all right and so with the bombardier in the shop here dad can actually start the process but we are we have to move the yellow one out as well uh this one's done but like i said dad's got a few days work on here and when the customer arrives for the yellow one we'll have this one out of here by that time and out of the machine shop we're going to do a couple days uh, cleanup in the shop as well while this one's away. And we got a couple other bombardier videos we want to do for customers on uh, uh, that want to sell their bombardiers. But this is the next project. We call this the Minnesota Blue or the Minnesota Narrow Gauge. And this is Dad's first international customer. And... Uh, so we're hoping to have this together for the customer by end of April, beginning of May. Knock on wood, but I think there's going to be a lot less work here for Dad, and you're going to see a lot more specialized videos on on how to do this and how to do that. And Dad's going to do another inspection here, but he was pretty happy with the condition when he uh, first uh, took a look at it. And uh, he'll figure out what needs to be done in here. Okay. Good. 
a hole to, to the east. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> right yeah, we see it. So again, uh, basically right down to nothing here. And we're going to install the uh, custom fuel tank, I guess, up here. There, we've done this on other jobs. And there'll be an intake here for putting in fuel. And then it actually opens up way more space to work. So we actually have the plastic fuel tanks uh, from the customer, but he indicated he want that after he saw a couple of Peters. But the entire step along the way here uh, is that inspecting and doing it like that. But there's been a lot of work done here. And uh, the customer doesn't want to fool around here. He wants dad to take his time and do a really good job. So, uh, I don't know if we got the tag anywhere. I'll we'll have to find it. But I think Dad figures it was late 50s, early 60s. I'm gonna, we're gonna see if the tag's with it. But uh, yeah, nice and clean. A lot of work's been done on this already. The good thing about this is it's actually on rollers and we're gonna be able to move it off the trailer on the rollers. But I think Dad still wants to put those tires on just in case first. Uh, I don't know what dad's going to do, if he's going to take it off those rollers or not, but it is, uh, it's up to him. I think it's going to be a lot less work uh, having those things on rollers so we can move this vomiter around uh, in the position we need it, as we need it. But yeah, dad's really, really, really looking forward to doing this bombardier because he, uh, I, I anticipate a lot less swearing on his end because Typically, Dad spends about 50 hours dis disassembling other people's mistakes or dealing with junk, and pretty much all the parts are brand new. So we're happy. Dad's going to be happy, and we're going to fill you guys in on the progress here. So Dad's doing the first walk around here with Peter. They're looking for uh, any damage or anything they need to be doing improvements on. And uh, this is this is gonna sit on the trailer until we get the, the wheels on. Okay, when this guy cut the slot, uh, <coughs> the rust is coming through because uh, of the slot, eh? Yeah. And there's where we took the tape off. Yeah. Took the paint off. Okay. So we'll take a bunch of uh, pictures yeah. here of the damage we know, and there's rust here already. Yeah. Back to underneath that lip. Yeah. Okay. All has to be cleaned real good and silicone so we don't get that rust coming. Yeah. See here? I'll clean all that up. It's just rolling off the top down. Yeah, yeah. just, I'm just snow. looking at the What? Let's go out. We're taking a picture of them. You supervising? And then another thing under here. You've got a chunk of metal about three eighths of an inch thick. And you grind it so that you got that little dip and you weld them both sides. And you'll never break these. And you see this here, bro? That has to be straightened. Yeah. Okay. That one's not too bad. <clears throat> what I'll do is straighten that and I'll put a chunk of channel iron in there. That'll never happen. Okay. Anyway, it's what it's all about. Well, find these things now before you yeah. start putting everything yeah. together. And then we don't use a, a hollow bolt in here. We put a solid bolt with a lock nut on. Okay. But you could have well got to respray this whole thing underneath. Yeah, yeah, it has to be clean first. And then if you can see daylight through here somewhere. Is the the fixed. Then. You see the daylight? Yeah, I can see the daylight. <clears throat> I 
I've got to cut that. You see that differential hole? Yeah, it's going to be bigger. Pound it out with a sledgehammer. You got to cut that out. Well, aren't you going to put in the round uh, yep. thing like you yep. did on Hartley's? Yeah. So you got these covers. Yep. Must be there. Yeah, you brought everything. When this guy was grinding here, he chipped this. Yep. Make sure you inspect that roof too. Looks like there's a lot of silicone on the top. Yeah. Things like, I'll just show you an example here. This is where your battery mount is going to be. You see this? Yeah. So, you put a hammer under there. Okay, well, there's a couple holes here too. Yeah, we don't, we're not worried about that. Though. But lots of holes in here. And so where, explain to this to me, where is the fuel tank going? Is it filling the entire back or what? Yeah, in the back. We, okay. we got to put a, a chunk of wood in the back there mm -hmm. that's cut on an angle. Mm -hmm. And then a chunk of three quarter inch or five inch plywood on here, mm -hmm. on top. Then the fuel tank slides right in, but I gotta do the roof first. Okay. And uh, the wood that goes on here, I'll show you what the mounting bolts are gonna look like. This way. The wood that goes on here is going to be about two and a half inches wide. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to make a special bit. The wood is going to be about that thick. Mm -hmm. I'll make a special bit for this to go into, so it's mm -hmm. preset. Okay. And then this goes into the wood behind, and you see those locks? Mm -hmm. Well, they jam right into the panel behind there. Okay. And that's how they... You're done. Okay. And then the other thing is, when you're putting the, the wood on here, it's got to end there. Because when you open the door and it hits, if you got it all the way to here, yeah. it'll bend the door. Okay. So one of the things we're not doing is the windows. No. Uh, we are not set up for windows, but uh, you can probably go to something like Speedy Auto Glass anywhere. So anyways, in the next couple of days, your dad's going to be putting on the front wheels, the back wheels, and then we're going to send it to the machine shop to uh, have, the, uh, cut have the front end cu cut open and uh, just to make sure that the gas tank is being built as per spec. We're going to allow the guy to work in there. And then uh, we're going to inspect all the damage, make sure there is no extra damage, let the customer know take photos of all the different things here and uh but there's 
Dad was mentioning he's got to pound out the differential hole. We're actually probably ain't gonna cut that out and put in a like a pot so there's no damage there. And then Dad's gonna really inspect the undercarriage and make sure it's all put together right. It all takes time, like Dad says, but uh, we want to make sure they're doing. We're doing this right for the customer.